FSU fan mode is your boy, the Polk County Note, and we back at it. Look, today, I'm going to go over what happened in that BC game. What's the deal with Jordan Travis going forward and right now in the Odell Hagens, in the Odell Hagens effect? And is he the man for the job? We're going to talk about that right now. Bowl bow. Yep, that's what we are. We are bowl bow. <laughs> So what's the need to be bowl by now? We're five and five. But next game is Alabama State. And yeah, we're gonna win that game. We'll go six and five, bowl bound after missing a bowl last year. We're gonna be in a bowl game this year. So that's a huge plus. Um we beat Boston College. I want to run over the quick offensive stats and defensive stats, get into what I saw during the game. And going forward, um, offensive stats, Jay Black, 18 for 26, 346 yards, two touchdowns. Probably could have had a, added a couple more. He had a couple drops, one by Gavin, one by Cam Akers. Cam had 18 carries for 59 yards and one touchdown. Black had eight carries for 29 yards. Jordan Travis, three carries, 94 yards, two touchdowns. We're going to touch on him going forward. Chase on Harrison had one carry for negative two. Tomorrow on Terry, seven receptions, 156 yards, one touchdown, and he blocked his ass off all game. He was really a key to a lot of those, uh, to like the 20 yard Jordan Travis run. You just got to go back and watch. He blocked extremely well. You don't see a lot of receivers do. Tomorrow on Terry had his nose in there, blocking hard. <laughs> Cam had four receptions for 49 yards and one drop touchdown. But that was all overall. He had a good performance by Cam Makers with over 100 yards of total offense with him. A DJ, three receptions, 80 yards, one touchdown. 60 of those 80 came off of one play where he was looking like the late Peter. I ain't going to say late because he's still alive. But he was looking like number nine, P-Dub, juking, jiving, all that, whatever you want to call it. Uh, cross the legs, like he was playing back. He was doing all of it, and he was uh, made a great dive at the end of that catch. He turned a, turned like a five yard slant into a sixty yard touchdown. Great effort from DJ. Trayson Harris had three receptions, thirty seven yards. Also had uh, like two big drops where he could have probably sprung for some more yards. Two big drops there. Trayson hasn't really been able to fill in for Keyshawn Helton like I think some people thought he was. I think in the slot. You know, DJ had a good game, but, uh, you know, Keyshawn's loss has kind of really been felt there. Cam McDonald, one catch, 24 yards. Key defensive stats. Nazro Hams, Nazro Ham, Hamsadeen, Jesus. Nazro Hamsadeen. Hamsadeen, Nazro Dean. Man, I'm saying that wrong. My bad. 22 tackles. He had 20-some plus tackles the previous week. Dude's been on a roll. He's a beast. Again, he's the guy, if you go back and watch my earlier videos, but he's the guy that I was saying, why didn't we move him to the linebacker role and keep Lars Woodbay, who was a natural safety, at safety. Instead, they did it opposite, and it never worked out. And now Nat Hamsa is really uh, really starting to like shine. Hopefully, he stays another year and continues to build. I mean, he's a guy that with his... Uh, physical attributes, I mean, 6'4", 220, and the way he plays, I mean, he could see himself really uh, blossoming up the depth charts, uh, you know, move up. Uh, I think he probably needs another year, though, because so consist consistency. Um, Gaynor had 12 tackles. Stanford Samuel had one of his best games in an extremely long time. Um, not even talking about the late interception, which kind of just fell in his lap at the end of the game. I'm talking about those nine tackles where he, in my opinion, played hard, played aggressive. I mean, we were trying to tackle 250-pound A.J. Dillon. It's not an easy task, and I felt like he played his most physical game I've seen him play. The team as a whole played their most physical game I've seen him play. I was really um, happy about that. Emmett Rice, eight tackles and a sack. Offensive line. Let's touch on the old line. A lot of people have yet to really bring this up. They didn't give up one sack on Saturday. That means something. Um, that means a lot. They went back to Baselli at center. 
No one ever, don't know why they ever changed it to begin with. When you saw the previous two games, how great it was working. It looked like the offensive line had gained some cohesion. And then you switch it up against Miami, and they had their worst performance of, you know, they just had their worst performance ever against Miami. Vaselli back at center. Uh, Dante Lucas missed the game. Uh, they said it was due to injury. He uh, was tweeting during the game and stuff, so I think he's fine. They have Maurice Smith filling in for him. Another true freshman. That's three true freshmen we've seen on the, on the offensive line. Keep that in mind. Um, and, yeah, the best tackling game I've seen from them this year. They tackled an open, open field. They tackled a very strong running back in A.J. Dillon. And uh, they were they really, really good job, in my opinion. Um, A.J. Dillon had, like, 40-some-odd carries. So, I think, yeah, he finished with, like, a lot of yards. But if you have to carry the ball 40-sometimes, it shows that they were they were doing their thing as far as uh, tackling-wise goes. Um, let's touch on Jordan Travis real quick. Three carries, 94 yards, two touchdowns. He didn't pat. He did not pat, attempt a pass. So that is a little telling. But it still doesn't excuse the fact that you couldn't find a way to get him to run the wildcat or like I know we had Cam running the wildcat, but we just recently implemented that. But you could have put Jordan Travis in the same position. I mean, three carries, 94 yards, two touchdowns. At what point did we not, you know, the word, did, at no point did anybody ever say, let's play this guy? But it comes down to um, Odell had some key and interesting points, I thought, in his press conference. He said Coach Browns came to him, wanted to implement Jordan Travis, something they have been wanting to do for a few weeks now. This is all, these are Odell Hagen's words. These are mine. And Odell Hagen said, you, it's your offense and I'm going to support you in whatever you do. So that's very interesting to me that Odell decided to share that little you know, tidbit. Um, and it goes back to was maybe Browse being handicapped and calling plays with uh, Coach Taggart. Coach Taggart is an offensive coach. The fact that, you know, you can't put Jordan Travis on the field. Like there were people, there were people who were saying, Kendall Bronze was hiding Jordan Travis from Lee Taggart. Well, look, the fact is, you're the head coach. As the head coach, it's your job to evaluate your talent and say who plays and who doesn't play. At what point, there's no way, if I'm a head coach and I'm an offensive head coach at that, it's not like he's a defensive coach where he's telling the coordinator, hey, I'm going to let you run that show over there. I'm going to worry more on this. You know, it's not like that. He's an offensive coach, which makes lets me, he was in on play calling, formation. He's in on all of that. There's no way Kendall Bryce was hiding Jordan Travis. If he was, that's an indictment on Willie Taggart. And if he wasn't, that's an indictment on Willie Taggart. So either way, it's not a good look for Coach Taggart. You have to know your personnel and know who you're, 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 you're playing, right? You just, you have to know that. And uh, so we went with, so they gave Jordan Travis some plays, and dude looked explosive with the ball in his hands. He knew what to do. He knew when to give, when to pull. I don't. He should have been playing. I'm not saying he should have been the starter at any point this year. Like I said, he didn't attempt any passes, so it's interesting that he didn't attempt any passes. I will probably see him throw some passes in the Alabama State game. But there's no way you couldn't have ran a couple read options with that guy against some of these other teams. You know, why we didn't at any point implement, you know, um, Jordan Travis is beyond me. Hornybrook did not see any snaps. So it's, I'm curious to know, is Jordan Travis now the second string? Or is, you know, he just there for special plays and Hornybrook so that's a second string? Um, I'm going to check out that depth chart def this week. <clears throat> to see how that plays out. Again, he had good awareness as far as the read option goes, like a lot of people thought he would. And uh, if he can pass, if he if he can show that, at the end of the day, he has to be able to do a combination of what Blackman and himself can do. 
That read option looks like it's legit. If he can stretch the field a deep, he might not have the biggest arm, so maybe he doesn't have Blackman's arm, but if he can stretch the field enough to make it respectable, it completely opens up the offense. And I think, you know, especially going into next year, this season's all, but I mean, we have two, three more games this season. Alabama State, Florida, and then the bowl game. So this season's all but done. Next year, I was always under the impression Je uh, Jeff Sims from day one. Especially, I know, if you don't get De'Eric King from Houston, which is still a possibility as long as Brown. I think he wants to play with Browns. And if Browns is here, that's a good possibility. I don't know. But even if he doesn't come and you got Jeff Sims and Jordan Travis, I think that's a good quarterback battle. And if he can show some things, maybe he beats that. Maybe we can save Jordan, uh, Jeff Sims and, and give him a red shirt or something. So he's definitely going to be in the mix, especially if he can show that he can throw the ball with some consistency. Um, so, yeah, that was the BC game basically in a nutshell. Again, I thought Odell did a tremendous job in coaching this team. Um, we did have some penalty issues, but... They played harder and more physical than I had seen them play all year. And ultimately, that's what I like to see. And the penalties that we had, they weren't key penalties at key moments, like it seemed to happen in other games. And I don't recall any penalties of uh, guys lining up. I think maybe there was one penalty where guys lined up wrong. So that's just something that you know we continue to have to work on. And that's a lot of that also has to do with, I think, that we just don't have intelligent football players. And I'm not saying guys aren't smart or intelligent, but football wise, we got guys that just do bonehead stuff. Um, Isaiah Bowen tries to run before, you know, we just got guys that just do not smart football plays. So we got to clean that up. Um, very interested to see uh, Coach Hagan. Going into these next two games, and speaking of Coach Hagens, that's what we're going to go to. The Odell effect. Is there, what is Odell's effect on this team? Well, obviously, we have, we now have three games of Odell being 3-0. and And every time Odell's been asked to do this, two previous times, and now this time and going forward, the team has responded and played some of their best football games that we've seen them play. I think... Obviously, he's a man that commands respect. I mean, even in the interviews, watch his interviews. Odell commands respect, demands respect, and addresses who he's talking to. Like, it's it's actually pretty impressive when he does it. Um, went into halftime, told James Blackman and the entire football team, it's time to grow up. I mean, how many times do you think they had those type of conversations, you know, with their previous head coach? I'm not here to um, um, jump on Willie Taggart, but I will say this. I'm a guy who thought he was done unjustly and being fired this early. But Odell has three games, now two more, that he can really justify that firing. And I think in the first game, there was a lot of key tidbits that, that when he says that they have been looking at Jordan Travis for a few weeks now and Browns ran that path, like... The Browns, I mean, Browns probably didn't even have to run that by Odell. And yet he decided to do that. And it was just interesting, the wording that he used, saying that, you know, in his interview, we're getting back to Florida State football and those type of deals. That's interesting to me. I'm not saying he's taking shots, but I believe, I don't, I'm not sure Odell was 100% sold on what Willie Taggart was doing. And I, I get that vibe and that feel when I listen to him talk. Um, when he mentions a guy like Jim Levitt, and he goes, that's my kind of coach. Again, these are Odell words. I like that. And uh, I think the Odell effect is a real thing. And I think that's who we should go with going forward. I know there's going to be a huge debate on who's the coach, Bob Stoops, and all these other guys. I'm going to tell you that. Let's jump on this coaching thing, and I'm going to put it to you like this. In my opinion, there's really only two options. Now, at one point, I had wanted less miles, and I backed off of that. But if you go back, and I'll put the link to that video in the description. 
You go back and I said, when I was saying who should be the next head coach of Florida State football, I said Odell. I said, go the LSU route. Take Make Odell your head coach. All that money, that that five-year, eight-plus million-dollar deal that you're, you're talking about, give Bob Stoops. Why not? Why do that? Give Odell a pay raise to be the head coach. Surround that man with the best staff money can buy, the best available staff money can buy, and go forward. Because that's a man that can go sit in any couch in the country and, 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 command, and, and command that respect of that parent and that child. I believe that. Listen to the way kids talk about that, man. I, that is, Odell is the lineage. Odell is Mickey Andrews and Bobby Bowden. That is the lineage. That's where we should have probably went instead of getting Willie Taggart the first time. We should have just let Odell ride that thing out. Now, as far as versus Bob Stoops, Bob, Bob Stoops is the only other viable option, in my opinion. Bob Stoops brings instant cachet and credibility to the university, period. That is a national name. Every name, every kid, every parent knows that name. Bob Stoops can go anywhere in this country and a parent and kid will listen. So he brings instant credibility. He brings instant stability. That's, that's honestly what this program needs. I will admit that with Hagens, you're taking a bit of a gamble, taking a bit of another gamble. Because you don't know, you don't know what Odell, like, again, that's why you should have went with Odell the first time. Now you're in a situation where you went with the guy who everybody wasn't sold on to begin with, but they were excited for him because he expressed how this was his dream job and how much of a diehard he was growing up, and it didn't work out. Now you're going back to, back to an unknown because Odell hasn't had any... Uh, previous head coaching experience, but neither did Ed O. I think Ed O served as interim head coach at USC for a few games, and then they eventually moved on from him. So it's not like, you know, it's it's really almost the same situation, man. So I, there's a bit of a risk with Odell. I think Bob Stoops is less of a risk. I'm not a big fan of Bob Stoops. I never was. Uh, he's a guy who wins a lot of football games, recruits very well. But he, um, has always lost the big game. Like he's always, I've always, you know, he beat us. Unfortunately, he beat us in what two thousand in that national championship game. But outside of that, I mean, he's always lost the big game going forward. But I think he brings instant credibility, and I think he's a guy who you give those, you know. They, they said five year eight. You he probably won't even coach the full five. You give him that three four years, and he might. Try to groom a guy along, and then you hand it off from there. I think Bob Seuss is a safe bet. I think Odell Hagens is the right bet, and I think it's the bet worth going forward. Again, I wouldn't have a problem with Bob, and I understand why the program would want a guy like Bob. You want an established name after what you just went through, right? You gave a guy like Willie Taggart, who had a losing record, but he also had a track record of turning around lower tier programs, and he kind of. <clears throat> And he kind of just looked like he was a bit over his head with what was, <clears throat> excuse me, don't got dry, with what is going on. <coughs> Damn. With what is going, what, what was going on. Jesus. <clears throat> Y'all about to die on YouTube. <clears throat> so, yeah. Odell <clears throat> and Bob Stoops, I think the. The safe choice is Bob Stoops. Again, that's name, that's recognition, that's that's cachet, that's, you know, that reputation, that's all of those things. No lie, no denying it. You can't deny it. Odell might not have that, but Odell has the lineage, in my opinion. He is Bobby Bowden. He is Mickey Andrews. He is Florida State Seminole football. And if you let that man... Get that staff around him. I think you have a special situation over there. We're over here, I think you have a solid situation. And it all depends on how much Bob Stoops is really going to be invested. Is he just there? I mean, when you're offering the guy, when a guy's not making that much money doing this XFL thing, 
like I think it's been reported, there's they're not a there's not an FS XFL coach making over like five hundred k. The players are only making like fifty to sixty k. So five years, eight plus million is a reason. But how invested is he? Because he's just there for a paycheck. Well, here you know, Odell Hagens is invested. He wants it, and he wants his university to be great. And you gotta believe he's gonna put a hundred percent of his heart into it. So the Odell effect is a real thing. And I support Odell Higgins 100%. I said it before it became this popular thing. It was to give Odell the range from the jump. So that's who I'm going with. I'm going with Coach Higgins. Um, Saturday, this next game, Alabama State. There's not really much to preview in the Alabama State, so I'll try to find some different type of videos to do for the rest of this week. Um, really, I'll tell you right now, we'll beat Alabama State. The, the, the big thing is going to be Florida. If that team comes out against Florida, I'm not even saying we have to win that game. That's a tough, you know, that's going to be a tough game. If you just play it in a way that we haven't seen them play all year, all of a sudden, you got to make that move to Odell. Like, just imagine if Odell is able to win these last three games. There's no way you can not hire him. So, you know, I'm with Odell. And, uh, yeah, there's your boy, the Polk County Gnome, man. Got me a new little setup here. I'm still working on it. We're going to have some stuff in the background, man. I had to get this more. I had to get out my kitchen. So, a little bit more, you know, stuff going on. A little bit more of a different look going forward. Um, Odell effect. Is it a thing? you damn right it's a thing. And it's going to be a thing going forward. This team's going to play hard for him going forward. It's going to be interesting to see if Odell can salvage this recruiting class. Um, that's the only thing that I think you have a like a negative mark on the Odell side is not recruiting going forward, because I know Odell's a hell of a recruiter, but for this class, I'm not sure he can salvage this class. I think Bob Stoops could salvage this class and maybe even improve on it. But I'm more of the bigger picture guy. I got Odell going forward, man. Comment, like, subscribe, sub share it. Well, comment, like, subscribe, and share it. Not sub share it. Man, I get my words all twisted. <laughs> um, yeah, comment, man. You think Odell effect is real? Do you want Odell going forward? Do you want Bob Stoops? Who do you want going forward? Personally, those are my only two options. Mark Stoops isn't an option. I don't care what anybody says. Norvell, you didn't hide. You didn't listen. You didn't fire Willie Taggart to hire a guy with a losing record in Mark Stoops, a guy that coaches at Memphis, a PJ Fleck. Like I know he's doing great things at Minnesota. I don't want P.J. Fleck in Florida. I don't care what he knew. You didn't hide. If that was the case, you just should have stuck with Willie Taggart for another year. You're either going to go with Odell or Stoops. The prime time Deion Sanders rumors, those aren't happening. Those aren't true. It would be. It, I think if Odell was to get the job, I think if Bob Stoops was a good job, he might consider a prime time. Odell may very well hire a Deion Sanders at a certain, at a recruiting position maybe i think you need to go up there and get t buck from mississippi state to coach these dbs D dion will definitely be around the cut the staff if odell's there now they were former roommates but i don't think dion's a viable candidate i don't care what lil wayne or lebron james says on twitter i don't think uh dion's not a real candidate to coach this team odell Hagens and bob stoops are and i got odell man hey it's Polk County No man. Y'all have a great Sunday. Um, again, comment, like, subscribe, share, man. Go Noles. <laughs>